Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another edition of Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Coleman and I are speaking with our favorite brain whisperer, Stephen <laughs> Campbell. How are you doing, Stephen? Good. How are you? How are you? Steve, good to see you again. Good uh, to see you again. You have uh, such a way uh, with our brains. Uh, you, you've taught me so much about uh, how our brains work. Good. And basically how we talk to ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, there's another component of my brain that doesn't always work quite as well as, <laughs> as it used to, and that's my memory. Mm -hmm. What do you have for talking to my memory? Like, hey, you, can't you remember this? Yeah. Well, let me share with you, first of all, how our memory works physiologically within our brain, and how we remember things, how we learn things. When I say something to you, your brain's recording it, okay? It's recording it right here under the forehead called the prefrontal cortex. And what it does is creates little clusters of neurons, brain cells, okay? So I say something, it creates a cluster of neurons for that and then that and that. So eventually over time, during the day, you have all of these clusters of neurons all throughout your brain here. And they number into the billions, the trillions, okay? So there's really no limit to how many your brain can carry, okay? What happens is, is when we go to sleep that night, our brain says, oh good, I'm glad you're asleep. Now what I can do is make sense of all the stuff that you learned during the day. So what it does is it goes through all that stuff and it connects them. It sees similarities, it sees relationships, and it connects them, okay? Till eventually it becomes, those clusters become a pattern. So if I learned about a city, I now have a pattern about a city. If I read her a book, I now have a pattern about that book. So we have all these, these trillions of patterns in our brain, okay? That's where our memory comes in. So what I wanna do with that is share with you some principles about memory that have come up in the last 60 years or so that are really, really interesting to know. And uh, rather than four, I think I'm just gonna share three of them because four is almost too many to remember. So I'm just gonna share three of them, okay? okay. I suppose I suppose I can't remember even three. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, why, right. that's why you have a partner for, John. That's that's right. I'm in charge that's of number four. Yeah. All right. Well. I, I, all I'm saying is start with the most important one in case I okay. can't remember two. <laughs> okay, I, I, I will start with the one the most important and also the most comforting. And that is that short-term memories are easily, quickly forgotten. You are not alone. Why? Because it takes your brain time to create those connections which run into the trillions. And so when we learn something new, we get all bothered by the fact that we don't remember it really, really quickly. It takes us a longer time. And then we say things to ourselves like, I'm really stupid. Well, one of the principles, in fact, one of the, the foundational principles of cognitive psychology is that your brain believes in everything you tell it. So when you say, well, I'm really stupid because I can't remember that, your brain not only agrees with that, because it believes it, but you keep saying it and the brain rewires itself so that those, those messages become a part of the way you think, okay? So number one, in terms of memory, short-term memories are quickly forgotten. Don't feel bad about it. According to the National Science Foundation, we've got about 85,000 thoughts per day. Don't ask me how they counted them, but there's a lot. Okay, there's a lot of stuff that your brain is taking in. And the short-term stuff are quickly, easily forgotten because there's so many other things the brain has to take into account. What you're smelling, what you're hearing, what you're feeling, et cetera. So number one, short-term memories are easily, quickly forgotten. Don't feel bad about that. Number two, you can improve your memory. There's all sorts of ways to do that, okay? Um, with the internet now, you can 
go to YouTube or go to Google or go to all these other places and learn new stuff. I think one of the most exciting technologies of the modern world is the internet because now I don't have to run down to the library. I can simply Google it and find it right there. Now I have to be very careful over what I accept, but all the information is right there anyway. So if I've forgotten, I bring my iPhone up and type it in and there it is. So there's wonderful ways of improving your memory. Your memory needs two things to improve. Number one, it needs repetition. You need to hear it over and over and over. And number two, again, my dear friends, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. And if it doesn't happen overnight, don't get down on yourself and say, oh, I'm really dumb. No, no, no. Because when you say that, your brain believes in what you tell it. So you need time and repetition for your memory to be improved, okay? Okay, here's some reasons why we forget things, because we do forget things, okay? Number one is they never really got into the brain in the first place. You are giving yourself so many things for your brain to remember during the day. And when you don't concentrate on certain things, they get lost. And yet we feel bad because we don't remember them. For instance, do you know why we have trouble remembering people's names? I hate to tell you this, but the reason is because we don't really care who they are. That's not too romantic, but it's true. If I say to you, my name is Steve Campbell, and you met me at a conference, you will say, hi, good to meet you. You will probably forget my name within three seconds. Why? because you will probably never see me again. If I say to you, my name is Bearded Bald Guy, you remember that because there's something to collect onto. Or if you say, my name is Stephen Campbell, I'll be working to you, with you for the next three days, you will probably remember that because you want to. So one of the main things of remembering things is to remember that this is what I want to remember, and this is what I don't want to remember, okay? Okay, and finally, brain connections are created every single time you learn something new. Your brain is constantly rewiring itself. This is called neuroplasticity. And as long as you learn things new and you repeat them, and you give yourself some time, those memories can become a part of the way you think. It all comes down to what you decide you want to remember. So the first time I met my wife, Mary, I knew what her name was, was in the seconds because she was so beautiful. And eventually I married her, okay? That's the way your brain works. Your brain, believes and remembers what you decide you want to believe and remember. And that's exciting. That's mm. interesting. It, mm -hmm. it is exciting. And it, it confirms something that I knew about myself, which is that I remember stuff. If I want to remember something, I have to tell myself to remember it. Yes. Yes. And I, I constantly... Uh, for instance, phone numbers. There was a time in my life when I knew maybe a hundred phone numbers. I could remember whose phone number, where they were, who the person was. And at some point, I just, maybe it was when cell phones came out or something like that. I, I didn't need to remember it anymore. That's exactly when it happened. Mm -hmm. When the cell phone came out, you did not need to remember yeah. everything. So yeah. let me give you an example. Do you remember 411 when you dial 411 got somebody's number? Okay, so let's say it's back way back when and I need to get somebody's number. So I dial 411 and I hear the recording and the number is 707-584-8453. I put down, begin dialing it and Mary walks into the room. No, 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 don't talk to me, don't, 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 don't. oh, you talk to me. No, shh, shh, shh. be quiet because I need to get this down. 
<laughs> Three, click. As soon as somebody answers, what happens to 707-584-8453? It's gone. Why? Because this has recorded it. You know what's there. Yep. You don't need to remember that stuff anymore. Yep. And that's why people say, oh, you're so smart. You're so smart. You're so smart. And all I say to them, I've learned research. I've learned how to find out things really, really fast on the internet. It makes me look really smart, but I'm really not. I just love talking about this stuff. And so see, so my, really basically great. what you're saying is the smartphone has dumbed us down. It has dumbed us down. That's right. Wow. By the way, getting back to something you said before, which was uh, uh, one of the reasons uh, I love when we have our conversations is that I always find fascinating stuff that uh, is obvious once you've said it. But uh, when you were talking about, I remember years and years and years ago, uh, when I was a young uh, uh, salesman in New York City, I took a uh, Dale Carnegie sales course. And yes, one I of did things, too. Took it to also. Yeah, one of the things that we practiced was how to remember people's names. And it may not have been in that course, it may be. So, so when you said, you know, you're, uh, uh, hi, this is uh, 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 the, uh, the bald Bearded guy with a beard. Guy. Yeah. Then I would say, okay, I know a stevedore that's bald yeah. and has a beard. In other words, I'd make some kind of comp. That's right. And I was very good at it. Uh, I could remember Nomadic names. Devices. Yes. I can remember names of people that I had no idea who they were. But if yeah. I saw them in an airport six months later in another part of the country, I'd know, you know that your name is Steve. You know. Maybe not Steve and, Campbell, but it would be and Steve. They would, and they would feel very valued to you yeah. and to them. And, oh, right. my gosh, you remember my name. Wow, that's really exciting. And suddenly you were very, very, very special to them. And they were special to you. Yeah. 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 So, so before so, we forget, before we forget, so what were these three memory things, which John has already forgotten? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number one. Don't feel bad that you forget short-term memories because you're going to. That's why I call them short-term memories because your brain is taking so much in every day you can't possibly remember everything. And this happens as you get older more and more and more because that's what happens to our brain. Our muscles begin to break down. Other parts of us, our brain does too. Our brains does too. Number two, you can learn to improve your memory through the internet, through reading books. I mean, you can go to memory classes and get anything you want. So you can do that. Okay. And finally, brain connections are created every single time you form a new memory. The brain is constantly rewiring itself. And you base that on the fact that your brain believe in everything you tell it. So be careful what you say to yourself about yourself. When you say, I just cannot remember people's names, you know what your brain's gonna say? Okay, yeah, you're right, and you won't. It all comes down to what you say. Wow, scary yeah. and wonderful. Good stuff, good Thank stuff. You. Now, Steve, you have left us with the ultimate cliffhanger. What? was number four. We'll do number, that. We'll do that in another video. Let's do that. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Steve, for another fascinating uh, uh, session. And, and by you. the way, John, if you remember, uh, when you write this thing up and put it up on YouTube or the description, which is what John does, uh, write the three items down. And if you can't remember them, watch the video a couple of times. Yeah. Thank you. It's a good idea. idea. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.